Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi, people. Look, look at this. Do you know what this is? This is a regression that's infinite. Yeah, it's supposed to make you sad and whatnot, but I'm not sad. I am happy man. I'm a happy man. I am happy guy. Don't think I'm not, cause look what it is. It's weekend time fun. Volume 28. Hey, hey, white people in the room. Hello. Hello to you, Braxton, with your whiteness that is not very well covered up with the graying of creams. You look like a, a, an idiot, but you are my best friend. You are my best friend, Braxton. Don't forget it that I told you that we are best friends. And someday, someday you will be a best man at my wedding. Which may be sooner rather than later, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't know. I'll tell you. <laughs> It's a secret, Brax, that I will tell you, and only you will be the one who knows. Okay. 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 So, I was very sad when <laughs> the uh, we don't say her name. It starts with the B, and it ends with an A. And it's got a rend in the middle. It's pronounced Brenda, but we don't say it. We don't say it. The name is a curse. It's a p, a p name. We don't talk about Brenda in here. We don't say her name ever again, Brenda. That's a terrible. How dare you, Braxton? I was almost better i am better how dare you say i'm not better i'm the better of i'm ever going to be you just listen listen to me listen to me when th the one whose name we don't say when she did what she did which was a terrible thing and she should be ashamed of herself it's a total <clears throat> bitch. And I will not, I will not do th with, hang out with her anymore. And so I got drunk and it felt amazing. And then I found a familiar old face. Look at whose familiar old face was hanging out in the bar and now is licking the side of my face. Stop. Stop it. Stop it, Chuckles. It's Clarissa. Me and Clarissa are in a relationship. Come and lick my tongue. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, Clarissa, you really know how to lick a man's tongue. <coughs> I almost puked. I did not puke. Put your buckets and rain slickers away. I did not puke. I did not puke. Is, isn't that a song? Cat Stevens. About not puke. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Anyway, so Clarissa and I, what do you think about that, Ian? Did you ever put your hand on this part of Clarissa? Oh, 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 oh. oh you did? Oh, what about this part? Yeah. Oh, you're okay. Well, I, I'm the one who gets to put his hand there now, so you shut up. You shut up. Anyway, I am with Clarissa, and we are happy. We are so happy. And we don't need anything else. 
Except for my good friend, his name's not Jack Daniels because that's a terrible whiskey. People don't realize it. Uh, they would be better off drinking my other good friend, Elijah Craig. Doop 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 doop. Anyway, so yeah, that's what we've been doing, and um, it's been the best. Uh, however many of whatever unit of time it's been. So. The in your face, Brenda. Did you see how happy I am? Who's creeping now? Who's a creep? Who gets restraining orders filed on whom for looking out the peeping tree into your bedroom window? Huh? Who now? Okay, still you, but I, if I ever catch you peeping on my happiness with Clarissa, I will not hesitate to get the papers against you you bitch I don't like to say it I don't like to say words of a demeaning nature to a woman but I will if her name is the the B word but I don't mean that one I mean the one that ends with a renda you, Brenda, you're terrible, and I hate you. <laughs> I hope your hope your new job burns to the drowning. Anyway, okay, so we've talked about some of the white people in the room. Hey, Chaz, did you see whose boss I'm sleeping with? Huh? That's right. Wait, is it? which is higher, executive producer or showrun. I don't know. I don't know. But you're not sleeping with her. You're sleeping with your daughter's best friend, Mommy, and that whole situation, which we all agree is real messed up. I, I don't care what you say. It's very sketchy. And you probably big ol' Midlife crisis, you old so and so. Oh boy, when are you gonna buy a motorcycle, you, you walking cliche? Ha! <laughs> Your face, you doofus. Anyway, Kason, oh, didn't you used to put your tongue in this part of Clarissa's face? <laughs> Yeah, that's her ear canal. I know how she likes it. Yeah, that used to be your case, but it's not your job anymore. It is my job, and I put on a hard hat and get to work with the light on my hat. Put it on and double up and give her ear exam. There's a little inflammation probably from an excess buildup of dried saliva. Doo doo do do boo doo. Anyway, okay. Who have I not said? Oh, Aiden, douche canoe parents are tired. Tired of you. Tired of you saying that I will never get to fifth base with Clarissa. Well, I did. I did. That's right. I got naked and I puked in her bed. Just like you said I couldn't. But I did. Yeah, in your face. Ian, did you ever do that? 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 Hey. Hey, look at this guy named Stanley. He's come to say a line. Stanley, you were no fun cause you don't drink and all my friends do drink doo doo You are not my friend anymore, Stanley, because my friends are Clarissa's boobies and, and, and a bottle of delicious whiskey. And my lady, my lady will have the wine. Thank you. Please go get chop chop.
go get. Go get drinks for me and my... Oh, you just say the words? Oh, look who's not very friendly ever since he got in a program and started collecting chips. Oh, I think you're better than me, do you? Well, why don't you just say your stupid line and we'll find out who's better than who, you piece of crap. I eat crap for breakfast. I do. Yeah, in your face. I eat crap in your face. For breakfast, you gunky. Anyway, get get it up here at the microphone and do your job and I leave. Because nobody likes you because you're not fun. Because you don't drink anymore and the only cool people drink. All the commercials on the television told me. They said, hey, Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons, a name which I'll go down in history as one of the finest because we burned my great, great hold up. Let me count them. Shut up. Shut up. Stop turning the room. Stop turning the room so I can count. You, Okay. There's great, 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 great. How many? Four? Okay, great. Then grandfather and we burned his journal so that nobody will know. Shh. Nobody will know the secret shame of my family. We will remain the Clemson mighty Pembertons of the fighting Clemsons. And nobody will tell us that our grandfather's had native girls try to pee on his face. Yeah, nobody will know. Secret. Shh. Okay, say your stupid thing, Stanley. It gives your sober butt out of here to know that it likes you. Uh, we can type fun, volume 28. And... And if you need a sponsor, I, I swear to God, man, it really helps. Get out of here, you old teetotaler. You teetotal none for me, sir. Oh, I don't like the cut of your jib. I don't like that you have a jib. It makes you sound like a ship rather than a person. With your host, that's me. I look beautiful. Clarissa. Clarissa. Go lick the screen and I'll watch it look like you're licking my face. <laughs> no, that's my face, you stupid. Oh, well, it was very attractive and everyone is jealous of our love. Uh, the very attractive to many hot young singles in your area right now. Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons. I'm especially... Very attractive to this lady right here. I tell you what, she won't stop. Let's just stop with the licking of my face. You, it's all wet. Oh, gross. Okay, Rem, we're with you right now. Of course, I went around the room. It's all white people. It's very much white people. White people is the place for me. Why, people, there's too much of us. I should have hired Dulce for diversity's sake. But apparently this company has racist hiring policies. Hey, we all believe in you. Could you play the theme song? I will play the theme song, but only ask because you nicely. This has always Ah, yes, I love the cha. Clarissa, when I make you my fourth wife, will you become my fourth wife? 
the cha will play as you walk down the aisle. It'd just be cha, cha, cha. And you just walk down the aisle and everybody will be like, oh my God, I can't believe they had the guts to play the one part of the song that we actually like and no other parts of the song. That's what we'll do because we only get to the good parts like the drinking after the wedding. We get that drunk every day. Every day, and it's a joy and a delight, and bring me those boobies. Oh, did you ever do that, Ian, with your face? Oh, you did it, and then she did it to you because you also have ginormous man breasticles. Oh, that's gross and weird. Clarissa, I forbade you from ever getting to do that ever again. No, I'm putting my foot down if I could pick it up, but I can't anymore. So I guess maybe I'm not. Hey, I play the theme song. You're proud of me. Good. Yay, winning. Hey, everybody. Rem is feeling a bit out of sorts. I'm in my sorts. I put on my sorts before I put on my pants. If you catch my drift, I don't. He really didn't take Brent. How dare you say that name in my presence? Braxton, I'll have you stricken from the record and dismembered from the Bar Association. Do writers pass the bar? Do oh, all writers don't pass the bar? That's why so many of them are alcoholics. Anyway... Regardless, uh, we really don't know what to expect from him this week. I'll tell you, the most fun ever, the most fun that I've ever been slash had slash been again slash had all week. So we decided to do some simple, straightforward, relatable, generalized humor oh the best kind i've been asking you forever is dispense with this highbrow comedy snipery of of hipster douchey proportions like what kind of show even are we are we not a family show braxton are we not the freaking larry the cable guy of home improvement of uh, according to Jim of, of American middle American comedy, are we, is that not what we have been doing all along? Is that not what we should have been doing all along? Anyway, you know, stuff we can all laugh at without having to wonder what it says about us that we thought it was funny. Yeah. Cause like when you laugh and it's like, ha, 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 but guess what? Now you're laughing at the thing that maybe you shouldn't because it's really social commentary and in your face that you thought it was funny, but really we're just pulling a fast one on you and making you vote. Oh, man, uh, that kind of comedy really burns me up. This is like a crying Hawkeye Pierce. It just makes you feel bad, and you're like, I came here for the laugh track and to see what Radar put in, in Klinger's boots or whatever. <clears throat> anyway. Okay. There's not an episode of Matt. I know all the episodes of MASH, and in none of the episodes did Radar put anything in Klinger's boots. And furthermore, Klinger became the the backup company company halt when after Radar after Radar went home to his goatesses and sheepesses and whatnots. It's true. Anyway, this week's God, that's bright. Could we turn it down? Could we could we turn down the colors? Could we maybe not? 
oh, this much white with this much white people is like hurt my eyes central. It makes Ian look like more of an albino than he already is. I know I'm not supposed to say that word around you, Ian. That's why I told you to not come today. I told him to not come today, but the boy doesn't listen. You don't listen, Ian. Anyway, albino. <laughs> this week's episode, because that's still what we call it in the biz. Things I overheard in the Deep South. The Deep South. Do I have to do an accent for this? Okay, let me try. Uh, hello. Am, am I doing a bit of Deep Southern rule? Oh, I am. Oh, thank you. Thank you, good sir. Is that I tried to do it? Was it winning? Am I winning, son? Okay, moving on. Doop, 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 doop. Heard in the deep south, number one. Okay, I... Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, I have to prepare as an actor to be able to read in the deep south. There we go. Hey, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna do this voice. But don't forget that this is actually, it's me, it's Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons, a man of infinite dignity, a man of great dignity, and someday chiseled in marble on the front steps of every courthouse in America. Anyway, here we go. Things I overheard in the deep south. There we go. Well, knock me down and drag me out. You scared the bejeebs out of me. I thought you were going to pair a veal cutlet with a Zinfandel. Daggummit, you know the earthy tones of a robust late pit grape will clash with the tender juices of a hand-selected cut taken from the best parts of a young cow. Pick a Cabernet and thank me later. That is pretty good advice. This guy knows about drinking, and I would like him to be the best man at our nuptials. Clarissa, will you make me the drunkest man alive by doing me the honor of being my husband? I mean, I'll be your husband, and you'll be my... What's the other one? Duke? Duke of Earl, that will be our song, Duke of Earl, because it's about, oh, bride, bride, that's right. Will you do me the honor of making me your bride on our wedding nuptials? You will? Oh, take that in your face, Braxton. You said I wouldn't ever get married or be happy ever again. But look who's happy now. Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons in your face. In your face, all of you people. Try to undercut me, make me unhappy, and generally pissing me off most of the time. Well, you're all invited to my wedding so you can watch and just suck it up. That's right. You're all going to be there and I'm going to marry Clarissa and we're just going to spite in your face, you stupids. That's right. Anyway. Oh, Clarissa, come here. Come here, you. Come here. Oh, she's asleep. Don't wake her up. She does this. She'll be out for like a day and a half, but she's she's still like very warm and tender. She will cuddle for for long sessions when she's in get away. She does not cuddle with you anymore. She only cuddles with me. And let's build a perimeter. Let's put a perimeter. Get the piso mojado sign. The one that says there's a piso mojado. Get it? 
I put it next to my sleeping bride to be because she is sleeping because she is overcome with happy. Okay, we heard a thing in the deep south. Doop 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 comedy. Will pepper my grits and call me Lionel Richie. Imagine seeing you at the combination family reunion slash Trump rally. Let's go support gay marriage and women's rights because we like to make the God of our parents, but not the true God who is Emmy Lou Harris, weep. That's right. Look at it, you, Jesus. Look at it, you, Yahweh. Yeah, that's right. Okay, it's time. how many of these are there, Braxton? Did you, I think we've done enough comedy. Is do is this episode usually more than twenty five minutes? Twenty six minutes? Is it though? What? That's too long. Everybody knows that YouTube videos longer than ten minutes get demonetized or also people don't watch them because they're too long and terrible you're doing a crap job braxton but you're still my favorite ever and i except for clarissa oh man look at the booty on that one it goes on for days and it's got a deep crevasse like a like a gorge i could spelunk it for uh, shut up ian you don't talk about my lady like that i'm gonna dive right into her ass cheeks when this is done and you can't stop me that's right okay heard in the deep south number three will butter my ass and call me an English muffin. We both of us got the same NASCAR slash local football team slash narrowly minded political shirt on. Do y'all got a butler named Benedict just like we does? I swear it's the darndest thing, man. <laughs> small world, small world. And that is how people from the southern part of the United States talk. Do you want to hear how people from the southern part of Cambodia talk? That Khmer Khom, it come from is Manta Khmer Lhote, non Khmer Khom. Oh my god, silly Cambodians. Oh, how many Cambodians does it take to be my friend? All of them because they are. Okay. Som ai bong bon khmai teng och ni ban chim rup su ban so someday in Jong Tau, Jong I ban a soak nung sabai, Jong I ban Louis Round, Jong I ban a punch Yuan in the face or something. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you want, man. Okay. I Clem Pemberton of the Pems and Clembertons. Here we go. Did we say this one? Do we say this one? They're wearing shirts and have butlers. Clarissa, I don't have a butler. I lied about that part. But I do have a pet monkey. And you'll meet him because he will punch you in the crotch as soon as you cross my threshold. Oh, glad it'll happen to somebody else for once. Heard in the Deep South number four. Well, hush my mouth with the back end of a beaver tail and call me the Pope of Judaism if it isn't the same sum of a bench I was just looking for. Uh, do y'all have these heels and a men's size 13? I have a drag show tonight and I want to look like Tammy Faye Baker. 
That's right. When I do drag, I try to look like various persons from the 700 Club, and tonight, Tammy Faye, here we go. That is a ridiculous thing. Hey, have you ever been, Braxton, have you ever been to a drag show? Those ladies know how to party. Maybe we should do that for my bachelor party because I'm getting married to Clarissa. I'm going to be her third wife and she's going to be my fourth husband. It's going to work out because we're really in love with each other. Yeah. Anyway. Heard in the deep south number five. Well, shut the front door and hide me from the Mormons. I've always wanted me a truck like that. Uh, do y'all summer in Lisbon like we does? Oh, Clarissa, we get to plan a honeymoon. Honeymoon. Do, do, do. Have sex in public. That's what that means. Do, do, do. Uh, we should go to wine country wine country because then we can split a barrel split a barrel of the white and a barrel of the red and then i'll put the uh, down in the bed and then we'll hump like rabbits do do ba do ba do 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 hurt in the deep south number six well, butter my ass and let me be the big spoon this time, Zaddy. There's a Georgia O'Keefe exhibit downtown, and I want to stare at flowers shaped like things I never want to touch. B because they got gays in the South. What, you think they don't have gays in the South? Two dudes kissing and whatnot, rubbing up on each other, going to art exhibits and getting all horned up about not liking vaginas and going home and... <sighs> butt sex, you know what I'm saying? Butt sex. I got it in the deep south now. They give it to each other deep down south in the deep south. That's right. Talking progressive now. It's all over, all over the country. I'm telling you what. Hey, Raxon, I heard that you like that you like to kiss boys on the mouth. Do you kiss boys on the mouth? Would you kiss me on the mouth? Come here, Braxton. Tongue out. <laughs> Come here, you lucky so-and-so. The only other one who gets to enjoy this pleasure is Clarissa. I'm offering you a limited time deal. <laughs> Bring it my way, good sir. I have a special mouth surprise. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bring it, bring it, and look at how big it is. Makes Gene Simmons look like a guy who maybe doesn't have as big of a tongue. Anyway, you know those guys who are famous for their small tongues? One of them's. K. Did that work? Is Rem out of his funk and capable of comedy? I am carrying this show, I will have you know, you son of the bench. You, your mother is a park bench. Yeah, that's right. Can we get normal again or do we just have to do the tame stuff so Rem can barely deliver it? Hey, I am a a consummate quasi-professional. A quasi-consummate professional. A quasi-fessional consummate prawn. Something like that. And now something that Braxton thinks up after a trip to the fridge. I gotta go get something, my guy. Oh, you got lazy riding them slides. I know what this is gonna be. Oh, Rem, I got lazy riding the slides. Now you have to pick up the slack. Do ba do ba do. Just like every freaking time, Braxton. I know I gotta flip this over and it's gonna be like, 
Rem makes up a story, or Rem does a thing all by himself, all improvised, and you don't even know. You don't even know. Okay, and now I thought of a thing. I did it. Don't worry, my brain wrinkles didn't run out of things. Oh, you did think of a thing. So I don't have to make it up on my own. And now Rem pits his wits against his alternate universe self in an open and public debate. What? We got my alternate universe self here to talk with me in a debate about something publicly? Uh, yes, this is me. This is the alternate universe Rem Pemberton. Uh, I'm the one who plays all the Minecraft. You play the Minecraft, but do you, is, are you lucky like me? Do you have an almost wife? Um, Rem, it's a little weird to see you this drunk, but, uh, I guess you are the alternate universe version of me. Anyway, yes, I do have a lovely wife, and we are very, very happily married. Thank you. I'm going to be happily married to my own self someday, very soon, as soon as she wakes up. That's mine. Look at the butt on that one. ho, oh, ho. Oh. Full of gorges and crevasses, all up her arses. I would like to dive in there with the spelunking helmet. Anyway, what about you? Has uh, spelunk much? Uh, I I was told that there would be no bedroom talk. I I thought this was a family show. Oh, the alternate universe! You're not any fun. You play Minecraft and think you're better than me? I'll show you. Let's have the debate. The question, shall it always hence be thus? I, I don't know what it means. Um, I think that this is an existential question. Uh, asking whether the nature of existence will always continue to be as it has hitherto been. Um, you know, behind this question, there are a number of assumptions. Number one, uh, we are assuming that we do in fact exist. That is the first, because, uh, if we are assuming that it is thus, then we are assuming existence. This is a sort of ontological assumption, uh, being made in the first part. And of course, you know, uh, in the same way that Kierkegaard took great exception when um, he looked more deeply into Cartesian doubt and found, how can you doubt the existence of your own brain when you are using your own brain to do the doubting? Haha, ha. Cogito ergo sum much, Descartes? Anyway... Uh, he got caught in this uh, very same trap. And so, um, assuming that it is thus is to assume that we are not part of some grand cosmic simulation or that we are not uh, merely the product of uh, a dream of a being so complex that we do not have the power to understand them or their nature. Um there are a potentially infinite number of ways in which this universe could exist as only um, either a, a simple thought which could go away at any moment or as a simulation which could terminate at any moment. So uh, there is a problematic nature in the very uh, posing of this question, but shall it always hence be thus, I think we can take something from the law of averages, which if you know your law of averages, most people actually assume that it means something other than what it actually means. Uh, most people will assume, like take the simple case, flip a penny 99 times, and if it comes up tails all 99 of those times, most people would say the law of averages says that coin flips will average out over time. And while this is true, when it comes to predicting the next coin flip, 
the law of averages says, go ahead and say it's going to be tails. It's already been tails 99 times thus far. And so assuming that this existence, the nature of which those of us who live within it can never and will never truly understand, uh, because, you know, uh, how can a, a fish understand the nature of its own fishbowl, for example? Uh, it, it lacks the ability. It simply lacks the ability to understand such things. Um, and, and so we, uh, trapped inside a similar system, will always lack the ability to comprehend the true nature of that system. But when put to the test, if we take the, the law of averages and say that whatever this existence is, be it a simulation, be it a, uh, a thought, a dream uh, from some grander, more complex being, or, or something else that we could hardly conceive with our relatively limited minds, um, if it in indeed is something of this nature, well, the law of averages would tell us that when we are wondering whether or not the sun will rise tomorrow, it most likely will. It most likely will. And if it's ever going to not rise, it will do so with no warning, and we will all accept the consequence. Do you know what I think about you? Do you know what I think? I think you think you're so smart. But guess what? We're both Rems of Clemson Pemberton Rems. So even if we're from alternate universities, it doesn't matter to me because I am as smart as you and you are as smart as me. So you know what I'm going to say in the debate? I disagree with you. I disagree because you're wrong and your mother is fat. Because my mother is fat. And therefore I make the same assumption about your mother because... Universes may alter, but the nature of infinity remains as it has been always, because it, if it could be other than it is, then it would be. So it's like a simple ontological trick to make that assumption. It's almost very similar to what Aquinas did in the original ontological argument for the existence of God, which seems like a very clever word trick, but when you look at it more closely, it has a sort of paradoxical beauty that cannot be denied. So in your face, Rem Clemmers of the Pemblages, you don't even know. Um, my opponent makes an interesting point. Uh... Do, do I really have to answer this? He's licking the side of a face of, of a woman who's passed out on the floor. And now he's motorboating her butt cheeks. Um, I mean, he did make a valid point, but I came all the way from the next universe over, and I, I'm just... I don't think this is very dignified, guys. I don't know what passes for dignity in this universe, but in my universe, this this ain't it. So, um, we'll see ya. You can tell him he won. I, I don't care. Uh, in my universe, this never happens. So, yeah. Doesn't affect me one way or the other. All right. Lovely meeting you. Braxton in the other universe we actually do get along uh you come over to my house all the time anyway we'll see you later ready to go the question shall it always hence be thus I propose that Cartesian doubt and Kierkegaard hey where did he go Oh, chicken, I'm the winner. 
I am winner. You are wiener. I am from Winnerverse. You're from Wienerverse. In your face, Rem. Which looks like my face, but we all know it's not the same one, because multiverse theory. Who won? And did Rem say, why is it that I have to improvise every time Braxton goes to the fridge? Bonus 10 points if he did. Oh my god, I did say that I have to improvise all the time when Braxton doesn't know what he's doing. 10 points for me, which means that I won downhandedly, hands downedly, in your face, you dingleberry, from another multiverse. Oh, man. I didn't know there was a multiverse where everybody's losers, but I guess with infinite possibilities, there has to be. Oh, Multiverse of losers, and I'm the only winner. Doop 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 doo doo. And now a different thing. My Wii U hath tipped over, but the cables prevented it from laying flat. So now it's at an angle. And I was gonna play the original version of Botwa, the, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I said it. That's right, snitches. I have a modded Wii U. Uh, I have my all of my all of my ha Braxton. You wrote this. You were under the influence. I can tell. You were under the influence. Takes one to know one. You old drunky louse. You old lousy drunk. That's right. That's right. I knew the reason that you're. Brighter's room always smelled like skunkles is because you were drinking cheap hooch. I knew it. I knew it. Anyway, okay. I have my all of my Wii, Wii U, and GameCube collections ripped to a single hard drive and easily playable on a single device. All hail Wii U. It got a bad rap, but that's a gaming beasticle right there. As a gaming monstrosity. That's right, snitches. I own a physical copy of Shovel Knight on the Wii U. Jealous? I do. I have <laughs> it's an actual physical copy of Shovel Knight. In your face. Okay, something funny. Something funny, 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 something funny. and that was not a funny slide, and it had the word funny three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty two times. You dingleberry, you didn't do it so very well. This is not funny. Oh, heard in the deep north, it's too bright. My icicles hurt, Braxton, when you make it too bright, because it's too bright for me, because I'm a star and you have to do what I say. Okay. I'm not saying something funny is again. I don't care what you say, Braxton. But here's the thing. As I have to do a New York accent. Let's see. Can I do New York? Can I do New York? It's like, oh, Saints per service. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, we're over here in New York. Oh, that's a very fine place to be. Yeah, fiddly dee. Anywho, gonna go down and drink myself to sleep. That's not New York. That's like Sweden or something. Okay, here we go. New York. Hey, I'm walking here. Come on. What's the matter for you? Uh, that'll do, I guess. I don't have a better one. I'm not like the guy who's like, Yeah, and this one over here is the Bronx accent, and this one's the Brooklyn. You know, you got your Bronx and you got your Brooklyn 
I'm not that guy who has all the accents who's like, hey, and then Queens is over here like, hey, Jamaica Queens. <laughs> I don't know. I have never been to New York. It is, in my mind, still a place of theoretical existitude and therefore not at all real, possibly. Okay. Heard in New York, the Deep North. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it now, the Deep North. Hey, Gabadini, you want to look what you's walking? I got to go touch one live farm animal that's not in a petting zoo for the first time in my entire life over here. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I grew up on a farm. I have touched many farm animals in non-sexual ways. You shut up. I grabbed their boobages for the milking purposes. Milking only. Heard in the deep north, New York number two. Hey, your mother's a whore. Get on the right if you're gonna go slow. Some of us have Civil War reenactments to get to because that's a normal activity for a person to attend. Note, I tried real hard not to call it what it is, the War of Northern Aggression. That's right, I, Braxton White Guy, am from Alabama. Oh my God, Braxton, you're a Southernman. You're a Southernman. You believe you're going to rise again? Oh my God, I didn't realize that there was ever anybody who thought that. That's weird. You seriously call it the War of Northern Aggression? Oh my God, well maybe if you were not so into slavery, then there wouldn't have had to been a war. But y'all were like, hey, let's own people. <laughs> and treat them horribly and generally be the worst for hundreds of years. And like, yes, the North for like several of those hundred years was like, I don't see the problem. And then eventually they were like, that is a problem. Let's not do that anymore. And you guys were like, Hey, I'm having slaves over here. And we were like, what? That's not allowed. Owning people. And you were like, hey, Gabadini, gotta own my people. And we were like, have at thee with the war of civility. And then many people died. <laughs> It was very tragic, and if Abraham Lincoln was not our president, we might not still have United States. Oh, my God. Okay. Heard in the deep north. Sorry, gotta do the accent. Okay, this one's heard in the deep north. New York number three. Hey, you bo bo That's weird. It's spelled like... Wall, wall. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong accent for to be able to do this. I gotta be like, hey, your board seems no good. Move it or I'm gonna break it off and use it to gravel my street. I'm trying to get to my job at the hardware store where I work at the same bolt counter. My dad and my granddad both worked at when I they was my age. Yeah, hardware store bolt counter, down home kind of stuff, you know, real America. <laughs> I don't think this is funny or working <laughs> at all. I am officially, this is me waving a white flag. Do, 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 do. This bit is going nowhere. And Braxton, you should be ashamed for your weird caricatures of people from New York City. Because you're like doing the opposite. And it's like, do you think that they don't have hardware stores in New York? Like, of course they do. Where do you think people get their freaking hardware from? 
<laughs> like, it's a city. It's, like, made out of hardware. And so the people have to be able to get some. So there's, like, hardware stores. Dude, you're weird. And your assumptions are odd. Okay. Heard in the deep north. New York. Number four. Hey, you want to shake them gabardinis any faster, Grandma? I got a permit to go out into the woods and shoot an animal dead and take its meat and or trophy, and I got to get my truck. Braxton, do you, do you not think people go hunting? <laughs> like, there have got to be, because upstate New York is basically country. It's like out in the country. It's like open country. They have deers and whatnot. And I'm sure that there are people from the city who are like, I own a gun and I take to hunt stuff. <laughs> I go hunt the deer. I go hunt the elks. I go hunt the lodges too. Anyway, you don't even know. You're making weird assumptions. I don't know about you. Hey, it's heard in the deep north, New York number five. Hey, you want to barely continue to get around by yourself any slower, Gramps? I got to go lock five different latches on my door. I got to hide from these Mormons and pretend I'm not home. That's the same one. Wait, you guys do that too? I regret... Okay, hold on. I think this is Southern men talking. <clears throat> Gotta get into character. Okay, I'm there. Wait, you guys do that too? I regret that we meet in this way. You and I are of a kind. In a different reality, I could have called you friend. Why is it the Mormons come to teach about Jesus to people who already wear crosses? Hey, Mormons, you know this is how most people think of you, right? Is <laughs> true. They're like, Mormons like show up like, okay, this town that I live in has more churches than people. This is factually accurate. And the Mormons are like, time to go convert people. And it's like, from what to what, dingus? Like, they already basically do what you're trying to do. Is just, they don't believe Jesus is in space. That's the big difference. Because I, I know you got the space Jesus in the temple place. He's like, I'm Jesus in space. I created the world. <laughs> you are silly gooses, you Mormons. You're nice people. You are nice people. But you are the silliest of geese. Swear to God. Was this at all satisfying? At this point, I'm not even worried about Rem. I'm just worried that I said a lot of unfunny things in a row that were only funny to me when I wrote them an hour ago. That sounds exactly right, Braxton. That is exactly as it is. That is, this is the most of correct slide of you have ever put together. Ever in your entire of days oh my god Clarissa's waking up my love my soon to be bride you were going to be my bride no you said yes you can't back out now oh I almost forgot hey Clarissa do you want my uh, gem gem Pemberton's dead ring no, she's dead. The ring belonged to her. And it only has little tiny flecks of her dead skin on it. Here, take it. Put it on the finger. Not that one. That one's for later. Oh, I'm going to make you do things with that finger you're going to regret. No, this one. 
Oh my God, it fits like a ring on a finger. It's fated to be. Braxton, do you see how fated to be this is? Clarissa will be my wife. And this cat just farted. And it smells like 16 ounces of hot death. Anyway, here we go. No closure. <laughs> the end. <laughs> this program was made possible by the... You know what? This is probably the best of these lookings that we have had for a while. Because <laughs> the others of lookings, not so much. Not so much. This program was made possible by the Igneous and Gertrudina Botcomer Foundation. And by viewers like you, promotional considerations provided by Ralph Morgan's Extra Strangly Snakes, the Lonely Ass Librarians Guild, Grandpapa True Reels, Foul Smelling Balms and Gruels, and the one and only True God, Emmylou Harris. She's so pretty in that picture. She's so pretty always. Like, if you see her now with her white hair and she's much older, She's still like Emmy Lou Harris because she's God and I worship her with all my heart. Like I worship Clarissa's boobages. Bring them over here. Daddy wants a her. <laughs> oh, 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 that's the stuff. That is the stuff. You earned yourself a slosh of wine from a wine filled back pack thing doob a doop put your face on the spigot now do it you're gonna you're gonna like what comes out <laughs> is it's chardonnay it's chardonnay like your best friend that i want to punch in the face oh i'm sorry <laughs> No, your friend Chardonnay, not the wine, the friend, the woman, the actual woman. She's kind of like annoying. What? Well, you think my friend Braxton's annoying. She thinks you're annoying, Braxton. Okay, we'll talk about it when we get home. Doop, doop, doop. This will result in a fight. And then she's gonna do things to my butthole. And then I'll walk funny, but the fight will be over. And that's what really matters. This program was directed and performed by Rem Pemberton. Doesn't this make you wish mint chip ice cream were actually real, Rem? Oh my god. I do wish mint chip ice cream were real. Ah, that sounds amazing. You are a genius. Okay. Written by a Braxton White guy. Have him a good time right now. I bet you are, you old drunkity drunkerton. You smell like skunk right now. You smell like a skunk on fire. And, <laughs> and your eyes are all red, even though you put visine in them all the time. Oh my god, Braxton, you're such a drunkard. Okay, theme song by the Out of Tuners. They're a pretty good bunch of guys. How about them for our wedding band, Clarissa? They can do the theme song. They can do the theme song. Okay, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. You don't have to put things in my butt. I don't want things in my butt. <sighs> okay. A presentation of Non-Sober Badger Productions. A subsidiary... A, subsidi a subsidiary of the large, boring-sounding corporation with surprisingly questionable business practices. Lawful Asset Holdings Incorporated. A branch of the intentionally vague corporation whose purpose may never be known. 
the Blaine Group. And communism. Not dead yet, suckers. Long as the the owner class continues to exploit the labor of the working class and refuse to share profits with the working class, the working class will always have a grudge. And the proletarians of the world will unite. And we will take what is ours with fire and blood. And you will see when your bodies line the streets that you should have paid us just a little bit more so that we would just not mind as much that we're still working well below our worth, our value in this freaking world, and the value of our time, which is finite. It will run out. We give you our time, we give you our lives, and you give us very little money. And you have a lot of money. And we demand that we have some more of that money. Because it's like, what? You got enough money for like 137,000 lifetimes. And I don't have enough for one. You give me some of that money, you greedy greed. Or I'm going to communism right in your face. That's right. Clarissa, I might be on several blacklists and unable to travel in certain countries. I hope this doesn't hamper our budding relationship and marriage. This week's lucky listener, we can get away giveaway. Bernardo Bernie Piccarilli. Hey, wait, is that Bernie who won the tourney and had to be taken out on a gurney? Because of the incredible journey, he took the team on an attorney and then you had to get an attorney because Mrs. De Mornay wouldn't keep her foray off his doorway, if you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? This Bernie at the tourney. It was a total journey. Oh my God. I'm not talking about the journey on the gurney. I'm talking about the journey with the team of the tourney. No, the tourney, not the attorney. He had to get the attorney because the De Mornay wouldn't keep her foray off his doorway. Don't you remember? I literally just explained this to you, you dingus. Oh, it's the same guy? Uh, tell him I said hello and come to my wedding. I will make him the happiest of watch me make me the happiest of men in the world. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rem Pemblidge of the Pember Clembertons. And I feel amazing in this time. And I want you to feel amazing like I do. So if you will join us. Join us in our wedding and 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 maybe join us right now in prayer. Oh dear Emily Harris, who dwells in probably I don't know where you live, Nashville, I'm guessing, but I don't want to look it up. I don't want you to get doxxed because you're God, and there's probably a commandment against doxing God anyway. Hey, hey, God. Um, I'm praying to you for stuff, and I need things like um, the, uh, table centerpieces for a wedding for guests not to exceed 500, and and also a caterer, a caterer, and an open bar. No, we don't need a DJ. We're gonna get the out of tuners. Okay, both. Okay, both at the same time. And we'll see which one the crowd likes better and then vote on it. Okay, that's a wedding. That's a wedding. We'll have a marriage. We'll have a marriage as people vote whether a DJ is better than the out-of-tuners. We'll find out. We'll find out whether you'd rather hear a cappella or do the Macarena at a wedding. I vote a cappella but we'll find out anyway anyway 
Doop 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 doop. Oh, that's right. I was saying a prayer to the Most on High. Hey, Most on High, you're like the mostest, and I really dig that about you. And I also like all of the duets that you sang with Graham Parsons. Those were amazing. And the song that you wrote. Boulder to Birmingham, which is a tribute to him and is probably your best known hit, is like a sheer piece of absolute songwriting genius and it's gorgeous and it makes me cry every time I hear it. And you're God because you're Emmy Lou Harris and you're the only true God that I care about in your face, Yahweh. Anyway, people, that's it for this one. Amen. And we'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.